what I seek. You will give it to us. The cult of the Absolute and the Githyanki want this weapon. They talk as if they knew it was going to be on the ship and yet Shadowheart has it in her possession. They aren't hunting Shadowheart, they don't say that they are looking for a dark haired female Shah worshipper, they specifically talk about the ship and they suspect that someone who was on board has taken it. It's the reason the Githyanki were chasing the ship, and through the serene circle of mind flares, it's how the Illithids are manipulating the cult of the Absolute into finding it. Draw Ragslin doesn't even know that the mind flares are involved with the Absolute. All he knows is that he needs to find the people that killed this mind flare, and therefore, in turn, find who may have the weapon. Get on the hunt. They know something. Suspicion floods Ragslin's mind. Your brain howls as you force a final query into his throat. Why were the Gith chasing that ship? You see dark tunnels lit by noxious pools of brine. The darkness spreads through the earth. The sky splits open and nautiloids pour out of a void that consumes the stars. What in the... We know from Shadowheart's bio that she was sent on a suicide mission to find an item of great power, and when we ask her why she was on the ship, she says, That is none of your business. I suggest we concentrate on surviving. Well, that's probably because she willingly went on the ship. It's noticeable that other companions are a bit more open about their time there. Take Astarian, for example. My name's Astarian. I was in Baldur's Gate when those beasts snatched me. Shadowheart was likely part of some kind of strike team, it's why we can find a dead cleric here. This person may have also been a part of Shadowheart's strike team, and that would explain why there are dead mind flares in this cutscene, and this mind flare is all calm about it. Because they've dealt with the intruders, Shadowheart is imprisoned and now they can go south to Moonrise Towers and pick up a few more people on the way. The reason why the Illithids have imprisoned and implanted Shadowheart rather than killed her outright could be because having a Sharon true soul may be a way to infiltrate Sharon's sects. They've warded her pod, she's potentially a high value prisoner and the Illithids may want to know how a Sharon sect found out that they had the weapon in the first place. It's clear that the true souls all have certain agendas. Minthara seems to have ambitions on returning to Menzo Branzen. I would have you by my side in Menzo Berenson, when our work on the surface is done. But for now, it will be good to fight alongside you. A true soul ruling the entire city of Menzo Berenson is exactly what the Absolute would want. After all, the Mind Flayers may be evolving, and the true soul route may be a way into a number of religions, societies, and factions throughout the realms. Written on Shadowheart's pod is something in Qualith, the Mind Flare language. This can be recognized if you play as a Githyanki, and the pod is in a separate room to where our player character and Lazel started, which was near the Pool of Brine with the Tadpoles. This chamber where we find the dead cleric is clearly some kind of testing chamber. We can turn the person in this pod into a Mind Flare, and there are seats all around it, as if it was used for a demonstration. The room we start in is likely the room where people appear when they have been transported there by the tentacles. It's where they get implanted, but the room in which Shadowheart is in seems different. Her pod is alone and warded, as well as the intellect devourer referring to her as the One. Leave the One. The One must be left. It might be safe to assume that Mind Flayers will mark someone as suitable to be a true soul and others for immediate transformation. I mean, just look at this nobleman. He was not saved by the mysterious being who broke our fall, and he has the following to say. Guiding my cart. Shadow fell. Tentacle grabbed me. Put me here. Put something in my eye. No. Took everyone. Peasants. Lords. Took them all. Fire. Screaming. Then crunch. Nothing. Then crunch. 
Perhaps he was never destined to become a true soul. Anyway, the Githyanki start chasing the ship, but why not more? In Dragon Magazine 309, it's made pretty clear that when Vlakith opens a gate to the material plane that she can send through a lot of Githyanki. 9 planar raiders, 24 astral brigs, and 512 astral skiffs for a total of more than 3,800 soldiers. If all are filled to capacity, well, there might be a reason for that and we can see it when Lazel accuses the Kithrak of being a traitor. The Kithrak is consumed by his hunt. He'd have taken my life given the chance. How dare he speak my queen's name? How dare he dishonor her child? Lazel is convinced that it is the Kithrak who is not following protocol, but in reality, Lazel simply isn't aware of Vlakith's grand lie to her people. The Kithrak is likely trusted by Vlakith to recover this artifact slash weapon without asking questions. It is likely the case that the majority of Githyanki don't even know of this artifact's existence, and Vlakith wants to keep it that way. The last thing she would want is the Githzerai and Githyanki doubters who are not loyal to her to find out that the potential crux of her entire power base has been stolen by mind flayers and then by some mortals from the material plane. In Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes, it says the following. If Vlakith knows anything more, she has taken drastic measures to keep it secret. A few sages and spellcasters have sought to learn the truth about Gith's fate using arcane magic only to fall victim to a bizarre curse that transforms them into the formless creatures known as Olips. All attempts to learn about Gith through divine magic return utter silence. Those who try experience a strange sensation, as if their minds were teetering on the edge of a great abyss, one that spans time, space, and memory. Shadowheart knows how important this weapon is to the Githyanki, after all it is covered in Githyanki runes. It's why she's so immediately aggressive, almost fearful of all Githyanki. It's also why she asks Lazel this. Lazel, how would you punish someone who wronged you? Wrong me how? Oh, say murder or theft. Killing is good, it culls the weak. But theft would be paid for painfully, a thousand times over. Hmm, good to know. Although it would be typical for most races on the material plane to be fearful of Githyanki, her reaction is extreme. She undoubtedly knew that the Githyanki were chasing the artifact rather than the ship itself. I've seen your kind's handiwork, and I won't fall victim to it. Get away! Maybe I have other reasons. Either way, come any closer and I will kill you. In fact, it's incredibly odd that this mind flare is even still alive. You'd think that the Githyanki would be straight there to start killing remaining Geek, but they're not. They're aware that the artifact has been taken and it's why they've spread out. The Nautiloid was never the intended target and Shadowheart knows this. Vlakith retaining her secret is the absolute priority. In fact, Vlakith is more interested in retaining her power than she is in defeating the Mind Flayers. Again, in Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes, we can see this. For all her seeming invincibility, Vlakith finds herself in an awkward situation that in her paranoid mind has no easy resolution. If she keeps her people busy, more often by ordering an increase in raids, she risks her best warriors and marauders becoming experienced and powerful enough to challenge her rule. Also, if she sends out too many raiding parties at one time, the security of two Narath might be compromised. So she addresses the problem by not dealing with it directly, but by trying to encourage her idolent followers to find purpose in meaningful activities that don't involve plundering and killing. So when Lazel says this, I will earn my queen's favor, and I will conquer every layer of hell should she command it. It is not unusual for the Kithrak to give chase, to penetrate the hells. This is unusual. But I'm not one to question the wisdom of my queen. I can see but to the horizon. Vlakith's sight pierces the many planes. It sounds like something Vlakith actually wouldn't want, and this is unfortunate for Lazel. The image of her queen is vastly different to the reality. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're confused, then I've left a glossary of terms down in the description below. If you did enjoy the video, then do please give me a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!